Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be pretty exciting because it's been in the works for a while and I finally got to the point where I tried out everything that I can finally do this video. And this is going to be the best and worst beauty blender dupe video or just best and worst uh, sponge video in general. I have a lot of sponges in front of me and then I have my little beauty blender. So we're gonna talk about every single one, the pros and the cons, the good and the bads. And yeah, if you're excited to see some beauty blender dupes, then please keep on watching. So I'm gonna go through all of these sponges and then at the very end, we will talk about the beauty blender itself. So I'm going to talk about the little ones right now in front of me. This right here is the Real Techniques like micro blending sponge. Comes in a pack of two. This is the one I have right here. It is currently dry. All these sponges are dry except one of them. And I don't like these. The reason I don't like these is because I don't see the point of using a mini sponge. The reason I don't see a point of using the mini sponge is because if you have a sponge that's wet already and you're doing your foundation, then it would make more sense to flip it over and do your under eye or you know use the other side to do your under eye. Why get another sponge dirty and wet and then use this little thing to blend out your under eye? That's just my opinion and my thinking, but um, the other reason I don't really like these is obviously the practicality of using this tiny little thing to blend out concealer. But I don't like the way the sponge feels when it gets wet. It gets very airy, very holy. Um, I feel like it's honestly putting a, a kitchen sponge against my eyes. I don't really like that. I don't like the feeling of this. Um, and I just, I don't see a use for it. You can probably tell I used it to bake and I didn't even like it for that. So I think it's a thing with me. I don't like these little micro sponges. I prefer just to use a, um, obviously just a normal sponge and just use my, the normal sponge all over my face no matter what I'm doing. But um, yeah, that's just like, I just don't really care for it. So I don't really see the point of it. The next micro sponge that I actually really, really, really did enjoy. This is from the Ulta brand. Um, it came in a set with like the, like one of their sponges and then this little guy next to it. I actually really enjoy this. It gets a lot bigger than the little purple one does when it is wet. It's very squishy, very bouncy. It's very comparable to the Beauty Blender. And that is exactly why I like it. I can use this to blend out cream contour because it does get big enough. I can use this if I wanted to, to use under my under eye concealer. I could use this to apply cream highlight, cream blush. I could use this to apply cream products besides blend out concealer because it does get big enough. It is extremely soft, extremely fluffy and bouncy. And I do think that the Ulta brand sponges are worth the money. I have the big one that I will talk about also so, but I love this little guy. I think it's a great investment. If you still can find it, I'm not too sure if they have the micro ones, but I know they do still have the big ones, but I, I really, really enjoyed this. So since we're on the Ulta collection train, these are their big sponges that they have. This is what it looks like individually. This is what it looks like inside the pack. It's the Ulta Beauty Two Piece Makeup Blending Sponges. These are hands down amazing. This is the Ulta one next to the Beauty Blender. Um, this one is, they're both completely dry. Granted, the Beauty Blender is bright, bright pink. And the Ulta one's a little more of like a muted rosy pink, but it is exactly like a Beauty Blender. It is soft, it is bouncy, it's fluffy, it's airy. It's not stiff, it's not hard, it's amazing. When I first tried this, I was shocked because I wasn't really expecting much. You know, I'm expecting real stiff, real hard, doesn't expand well underwater, doesn't expand at all. I wasn't really expecting much of this, but when I got it wet and then I used it to apply foundation and then flipped it over for concealer for the pointed side, I was blown away at how fluffy it was and how easy it blended out my concealer and how seamlessly it looked. It looks so good. I was so impressed with this little guy. So I will always repurchase these. That's why I have this one and then I have this little pack right here because I absolutely love these. And they're two for $10. I mean, you pay $20 for one beauty blender. I mean, if you love buying beauty blenders and that's what you like to do, there's no shame in that. Beauty blenders are a great sponge, but there are also alternatives out there. That would be why I'm doing this video. Okay, next sponge. Um, we'll, we will do this little guy. This is from the Sephora collection. So this is only available to buy at Sephora. I got this in my Sephora Play subscription box and I didn't use it for a while because I looked at it again and said, oh, what is the shape? I don't really like the shape of it. So that kind of just drew me away from it because I don't like the shape. But one day I was just like, okay, I need to try out all of my sponges that way I can do this video. So I just decided to use it. I got it wet underneath the sink and I was like, okay, so it feels really, really good. It's really soft, really bouncy, just like the Ulta 
the one that I had just talked about and it's exactly like that. It's so good. It's so bouncy and fluffy. I definitely wish that they would redo this shape and make like a shape like this or a shape like the L'Oreal one. Just something a little different because I find this weird. I use it for a foundation like this and I'll turn it, turn it over for the smaller side for underneath my eyes or my forehead, nose and everything like that. Um, I love the sponge itself. It is very soft, like I did say. It's a little more dense when it's dry, but when you wet it, it's completely different, and I absolutely love it. I believe this retails for around like nine or $10, so you get more bang with your buck when you buy the Ulta ones versus the Sephora one. Plus, these have better shapes than the Sephora one. So um, it's a really great sponge still, so I wouldn't overlook it anymore at Sephora. I would definitely grab it and try it for yourself. So now is a sponge dud. <laughs> and this came with the cream contour kit from CoverGirl that I did a like worst cream contour kit from the drugstore. And I tried to use it. It came with the cream contour and it is, it's very stiff. I put it under the water, it didn't expand, it didn't get bigger, it didn't get softer, nothing. It, it's just, it's a rock. And to cream contour with this is very, very hard, especially when it's so stiff and um, to move around cream product already is very difficult. To cream contour in general is very difficult for me. And uh, this made it, it didn't make it any easier at all. It was very hard, very stiff. There's no bounce to it. There's no give to the sponge. I mean, do you hear that? It's like hitting a rock against your hand. It's very hard. I don't like this at all. Um, CoverGirl tried. I know Maybelline, I think, has a sponge out right now that I need to pick up also, but I don't like this. I don't like the consistency of it. It's very hard. You could honestly use it as a stress ball. It's so hard. The next two sponges that I am kind of just in the middle about. These are the Eco Tool sponges. Everybody loves these. There was a time on YouTube to where everybody was talking about these. And I used the green one today for foundation. I like it for a foundation. I like the butt end of it for a foundation. I don't really like the top of this for concealer at all. I think this is better for baking because it's so flat and then it cuts off at the top at a little, um, like a little point. It's really easy for baking. Um, I don't really like the little one. Like I said, I'm just not a fan of little beauty blenders like this. It's a good sponge, don't get me wrong, but I just, I'm just kind of not a fan of it. I will have to say when this is wet, it's not the softest sponge I have. It definitely has a little more density to it when you get to the center. Compared to the L'Oreal one and like the Ulta one, this is a lot more denser. And it's just, it's not the best one I have. I have other ones that are better. It's good, that's why I did use it today, but it's just not my favorite. I believe you can get these in a pack together for $10 and you can get the big one alone for like $10. I'm not too sure, I don't really remember the price of the Ulta. But um, when it's dry, it is very, very stiff. The little one is dry right now. And um, when it's wet, it's just, you can feel the density right in the center of it. And you can't feel the density with other sponges I have. So it just, it's good, but it's not the best in my opinion. Now for a, another dud. This is the Pure Cosmetics Blending Sponge. This came in like a little trio in BoxyCharm a couple of months ago. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then I saw the price. It was like a little over $30 for three sponges. I was like, okay, these sponges better be good because that's a little much. Granted, it is three sponges, but I was like, okay, let's try it out. So I got it wet and it was as hard as a rock. It honestly reminded me of this CoverGirl one. I, I don't like it. I don't like how dense it is. I don't like how hard it is. I don't like how it doesn't absorb any water and get bigger. It made fl blending out my foundation and concealer very difficult because there was no give to it when you... um. Um, kind of like bounced it on your face to blend out your products. There was no gift to it, so it was very stiff and very hard to work with. I don't like it for that reason. And um, when I think of Pure Cosmetics, I think, okay, so Pure Cosmetics, Beauty Blender brand, like, okay, maybe they have like the same gist on sponge making. And I was kind of thinking it was going to be good. But then again, that's my misjudgment just because it's a more like high-end brand doesn't mean it's gonna have good products, which that's common sense. But I was just kind of hoping, I was rooting for it because it, it looked cute. I like how it had pure um, pressed in a sponge right here. I just had high hopes for it and sadly it did let me down. Um, so I, I just don't like it. And the sponges I definitely don't like, I will probably um, give to family and friends or just toss if they're just horrible, like the CoverGirl one, for example. So another sponge that I'm absolutely in love with, which is no lie because I talk about it all the time on my channel and so does everybody else. And this is the L'Oreal sponge. Um, Mine is used, there's powder on it, there's uh, foundation all on it. So 
I have a new one waiting back there because this one's bound to give up on me sooner or later. But I love this guy. It gets a lot bigger than what it is dry right now. And even when it's dry, it is the most softest sponge ever. And when it's wet, it is extremely soft, extremely absorbent of the water. It just takes the water in, makes it bouncy, makes it light, makes it airy. Just real easy to blend everything. I, I mean, when I blend it out, I literally just barely tap my face and it blends out the foundation perfectly. It looks so flawless. I absolutely love this and then I can flip it over and use the pointed side for concealer makes it real easy um, I love the shape of this actually I love the shape a lot and um, this little groove right here gives a perfect hand to like put your um, nails in and then kind of hold to blend out your concealer or you can flip it around and then hold it again for a foundation. So it makes it really easy for that purpose and I like it. I believe the price point of this one is around six or seven dollars at Ulta. HEB sells them, Walmart sells them, CVS sells them, anywhere that sells L'Oreal has these. So I absolutely love this little guy. And right here we have our last miss of a sponge that I did not like. This is the Morphe sponge. I have only ever seen one person talk about this and the only person I've ever seen talk about this is Jaclyn Hill and I don't like it. I think it soaks up product so badly. Um, when I used my foundation with it, I used a foundation uh, that I use all of the time and when I use like my L'Oreal one for example, my Ulta one or my Sephora one, um, I can get one pump full face done. I had about two and a half pumps of foundation with this thing and the bottom of the sponge was completely just solid brown and I was on two and a half pumps foundation with like just I was just now starting to get the coverage I get with a normal sponge so I was like okay something's up here the foundation is being sucked into the sponge and I did not like that obviously. It got big and it got fluffy it's not as fluffy as my other sponges but I could not get the I could not get past the point that it soaked up that much product because that's a way of my money. Other sponges I have don't do that. They soak up product to a certain extent because that's what you want so you don't get um, too much foundation on your skin or you don't get cakey. Um, you want that with sponges but this honestly soaked up so much to the point where it's just wasting me product and time of reapplying it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the point of it. It's uh, clean because I haven't used it and I just I don't like it at all. Uh, maybe for cream contouring it would be a little better. You could use a point right here and really chisel out your cheekbones and that way it could soak up some of the excess product. But for foundation, I do not like this. And the last sponge I have right here is the Real Techniques one. I feel like this has gotten lost in my collection since I have so many other great, amazing drugstore beauty blender dupes. This used to be like my everything. I would only use this. I would always use this. I would have like two or three at a time that I'm using because I used them all the time. And since I found, you know, all of these other sponges right here, I just have... I have those I want to use. I have um, more preferences over this one. This one's good, don't get me wrong, but I like others more. I prefer to use other ones more. I prefer my L'Oreal one. I prefer the Ulta one, the Eco Tools one, the big one. So it's just, it's not that it's not good because it is really good. It gets fluffy, it gets big, it absorbs the water, it gets really soft, it blends everything else out nicely. The flat side's good for foundation or you can flip it over and use the other side for concealer or foundation. It's a great sponge in general. I just have other ones that I like over it. So therefore I kind of, I gravitate towards the other ones over this one. And then of course we have our classic beauty blender. I have mine in the little ring. It sits on top of my little acrylic thing that y'all don't ever really see because I sit right in front of it. But um, yeah, I honestly never use my beauty blender anymore because why should I use my beauty blender and waste $20 on products when I have all of these great sponges sitting right in front of me ready to use that are just as good, way cheaper, way more affordable, and I just, I don't see the point of it anymore. It was, it was, the beauty blender was great at a time when no other company was making a sponge. That's when it really made its come out, made its comeback. It was just a great sponge in general. But when all these other sponges started to come out, it was like, okay, is $20 for a sponge really that, like, is it that much necessary? Or can I spend, you know, two for $10 or $6 or $9, you know, and get just the same amount of greatness of a sponge and not have to spend $20 on it? 
And I definitely think that's a yes, you can spend less on a sponge and still get the same outcome for sponge quality. That sounds so weird. But um, yeah, I don't think it's necessary to buy Beauty Blender anymore. And the ones I do have, I'll use them, but I'm not gonna buy them anymore. There's no point of me to buy them. The only thing I will ever buy from Beauty Blender is the Solid Beauty Blender Cleanser because I love that to clean all of my sponges in general, but I will no longer buy the sponge. I'm like an anti-Beauty Blender person now. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I hope it was informable because that's a lot of sponges and it's a lot of talking. But I will link all the sponges down below and everything like that. Like I said, I love all of them and the ones I do love are just so we can refresh everything. The Ulta Beauty Makeup Sponge Set, the Sephora Collection Sponge, the Eco Tools Set is good. I prefer the big one over the little one. The Mini Ulta Collection Sponge, if you can still find it. The L'Oreal Purple Sponge and the Real Techniques Sponge. These are all sponges I love. And then the ones I do not like are the Mini Purple Real Techniques Sponges. This CoverGirl one that comes in a set with a cream contour kit. The Pure Sponge, which is just, ugh, I don't like it. And then the Morphe sponge, which soaks up so much product. So I hope you guys did find this informable. If you wanted me to do this like over any other products, like bronzers or anything like that, just like kind of like maybe my top bronzers or I don't know, something of that sort, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what y'all think about sponges, the sponges that I mentioned, the sponges I didn't like, the Beauty Blender. Let me know what y'all think down below. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you guys later. Bye y'all.